Well, the weights have been released today for the Emirates Melbourne Cup, and the man who's put them together is the chief handicapper for Racing Victoria, Greg Carpenter, joins me now. Um, grand final day for you? Well, it is. It's <laughs> always a privilege to release the weights for the em- Emirates Melbourne Cup. Seventh time I've done it. It doesn't get any easier. Um, but it was a really interesting exercise this year and looking forward to what's going to be a great race, as it always is. How was the challenge this year, given the two weights were separated, Caulfield and Melbourne? Well, now that we're through the process, I think it's worked very well. Um, going back to the Caulfield Cup, it was a great opportunity for the Melbourne Racing Club to have first bite of the cherry and promote that race in the spring, and I think that's worked very effectively. And the Victoria Racing Club were very keen to build as much form into the weights for the Emirates Melbourne Cup as they possibly could. And what you've seen is a, a reduction in the number of horses, but most of them have been speculative uh, entries, and I think that saved people a lot of money. So I think it's been a win-win situation for both races, for both clubs. Mary Kane, last year's winner, you've given him the top weight of 58. Well, the 150th renewal last year was probably the most competitive edition of the Melbourne Cup we've ever seen. It represents a rise of three and a half kilos over his winning weight from last year. When you look at horses who have had to carry that weight, since 1972, 35 have run with 58 or more, and only two have won. Maccabi Diva in 2005 when she won her third race, and Think Big who won with 58 and a half in 1975. So it's a challenge, and so it should be, to join that remarkable but very short list of horses who have been able to win uh, successive Cups. Horse that's gained a bit of press over the past week with some impressive victories. Irish St Ledger winner, Duke Box Jury. You've given him 57? He takes 57 kilos. Uh, he's been in really good form this European summer. Uh, he won the race in France, the Prix de Kergalay, where he beat Managar, Red Cadeau, Dunedin, he beat Americane. If you line him up with Americane from that win, he meets him a kilo worse. Then he went to uh, the Curra for the Irish St Ledger, dead heated with Duncan, and uh, beat Red Cadeau, the third horse, by just a length. Now he meets Red Cadeau three and a half kilos worse. So 57 is a good weight for the horse. It is a challenge. Um, seven Irish St Ledger horse winners have, have run in the race the same year, and only Um, Vintage Crop's been able to do it. He loves to get out in front, and I think his style of racing will suit Australia. So I hope that Mark Johnson comes. He's been here three three times before, quick ransom, Yovana's pace and double trigger, and I'm sure he'll be hoping for better luck if he brings jukebox jury. A lucky day, runner-up last year. You've lifted him three kilos. Three kilos, and uh, as a handicapper, he's progressed from a four-year-old to a five-year-old. So a kilo and a half of that is the natural progression under the weight for age scale. The other kilo and a half represents the progression for me in the weights for that second performance. Now, he had a a couple of starts in the autumn this year, got a long way back and was running on but never threatened. Um, Looking forward to seeing him run in the Underwood on Saturday. Um, If he can recapture the form of last year and and improve on it, um, most people who would have left... Flemington last year would have picked him as the winner of this year's race. One of the key points you raised at today's uh, conference was about December Draw who is right at the top of betting markets but he's a long way off getting a start at the moment. He is. There's a, probably a three stage process for December Draw. He's got to win the naturalism this Saturday at Caulfield which gets him into the Caulfield Cup. Now I can penalise him for both races, the Caulfield and the Melbourne Cup but it doesn't get him past the ballot for the Melbourne Cup because it's over 2,000 metres and to get the past the ballot you've got to be in a race of 2,300 metres or further. But if he wins the naturalism it gets him into the Caulfield Cup. If he wins the Caulfield Cup then he's guaranteed a run in the Melbourne Cup. If he can't, if he runs a nice second or third it will get him past the ballot, but he's still going to be very vulnerable in the weights. So it is a a fairly long process and a difficult one for him, Um, but he loves Flemington. He's been here three times. He's been impressive in winning all of them. Um, And he's not the only one in that boat. King's Rose and also Lights of Heaven are also well up in the markets, and neither of those two mares have passed the ballot either. So December draw is probably a prominent one, but there's a number of others who really need to put in a, a, a very good performance in a race of 2,300 metres or further to get their way into the race. 
Well, you've done your work now. Now it's over to the horses to do theirs. Well, it is. Uh, you know, we, we, we've got, a, we've got a, a long journey ahead of us because, as everyone knows, the weights come out. Horses at the top of the weights would always like a little bit less. Horses at the bottom of the weights would like to have a little bit more weight. So their challenge is to try and win some of these key races on the way through, like the Geelong Cup, the Mooney Valley Cup, the Herbert Power. And when they do, it's my role to assess what sort of penalty they deserve for that emerging form. So the weights are out, Sean, but we've still got a lot of work to do before now on the first Tuesday in November. Thanks, Greg. Pleasure. There we go. Greg Carpenter talking about the weights for the Emirates Melbourne Cup.